to make it. It's Mike Novak from the Novak Real Estate Team, part of Real Brokerage. We are located just north of Seattle in an area called Snohomish County. My wife and I own and operate the Novak team. We've got 17 people on our team, a mixture of agents, partners, and admin. And today I am joined by my super good buddy out of Florida, Jason Smith. Jason is actually from New York originally, where he's at right now. And he moved his whole operation out of Florida. Was it two years ago, Jason? Yeah, we're about 18 months in, I think, at this point. Yep. Yep. And then Jason uh, has uh, basically recreated what he did in New York down in Florida. Um, and he just kind of moved his family down there because of the dynamic of COVID. And I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Jason, but go ahead and just kind of explain that move if you could. It's, I know a lot of people think about changing markets and moving destinations, especially right now. And Florida is probably top of that list for a lot of people. What, is that, <laughs> what has that been like and why did you make that decision? Yeah, I mean, for us, I mean, we, we ran a team up here in New York and in, in, in Watertown, New York, uh, uh, next to a big military installation. And uh, so I've been, I think I've been licensed, so I'm pushing 12 years now and you know, one would think we were crazy to make the decision. To, you know, we for sure were the number one team here in the local marketplace. And, but uh, kind of got to the point where COVID, the dynamic of that and, and, the, and the political aspect of things. And um, my kids are very young and a lot of my wife's family's in Florida and stuff. And there's just a lot of other factors over and above, you know, finances, I guess, to make the change. And uh, basically, as we were shut down with COVID, we, I, I walked into the house and I said, Hey, I'm ready to, to make the move. And we basically over a, a course of about 12 months, we, you know, liquidated things and made, you know, moves to, to get rolling. So definitely uh, not for the faint of heart for sure to, to, to make the change. So uh, there's definitely a lot of things that we couldn't account for, didn't account for. And, and in fact, some of the stuff that we're going to discuss today, the effort that it took to create a brand, especially in a, in a larger new marketplace, and when, as we just talked about, where, you know, the unique value propositions aren't really as valuable, you know, right. when you're in, in a market where anybody can sell a house. So, um, but, you know, some of what we're going to talk about today is, you know, how I created what we created here in New York and how we're trying to implement that in Florida. And, and I think how some of your smaller teams or individual agents, even larger teams can uh, learn from some of the stuff we're going to unpack today. How much was uh, the difference in price point uh, consideration? <laughs> you told me your price uh, point in New York, and I was like, wait, you can buy a house for that? <laughs> That's like a nice RV cost that year. Yeah, I mean, and it's gone up since since we've left, because, uh, you know, certainly things improved here, too. But when I first started, uh, our average sale price was about 130 grand. Yeah. And I believe our, you know, team average sale price when we started winding down was about 180 um and it's currently approaching 550 where we're at in sarasota area bradenton florida profitable shift <laughs> yeah for sure so so that was the idea we could recreate what we did in new york there obviously you know uh, it makes more sense so. and i see all the photos yeah. on the beach with the kids i mean that doesn't look too bad either yeah you know it's uh it's a quick <laughs> job therapy yeah for sure yeah it's, that's too easy definitely yep well, let's jump right into the topic today. So we're talking about building a brand and developing mind share. And this is kind of a large topic. Like this isn't um, like one of those, you know, like really focused, like lead conversion kind of webinars today. It's like a, it's a bigger concept that we want to break down for you guys. My goal for you would be watching this uh, either live or as a replay is that you could walk away from here with two or three specific things you could do to work on building your brand or mind share. A lot of people are focused on just generating leads, and this is a totally different conversation than that. Uh, J Jason has done a great job uh, in New York of positioning himself. That's uh, how he had so much momentum up there, and he started doing the same things in Florida today. So he is what I would consider a subject matter expert when it comes to sharing how to build a brand and how to really start being top of mind in your market as well. So Jason, just explain for everybody, like, what the hell does Mindshare mean? Like, what, what does that mean? In, in my terms, in, in, by the definition, I believe what it means is, you know, obviously we're talking real estate. So if somebody talks about real estate, uh, you're on their mind. Um, you're, you're one of, you know, three people that are, are mentioned, you know, whether it's a social media, hey, I'm looking for a realtor. Uh, you need to be mentioned. Somebody's talking in a social setting. Hey, I need a realtor. I'm thinking about selling my house. You need to be mentioned. Um, and I believe that if you're not, you have work to do. Um, and I think anybody in the marketplace now, you know, we, 
here here in New York, you know, it's a much smaller market. So definitely a little bit of a big fish, small pond situation. So I think it is a little easier in that aspect. But nonetheless, you know, mind share is, is simply that just being on somebody's mind as it relates to, you know, whatever value that you're offering. It doesn't have to be real estate. In this case, it is, right? So um, that's my definition. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, how do you get people to know about you? I mean, like, I know that for you, and this is going to resonate with a lot of people watching this, uh, you got started with very little cash. Like you didn't, you couldn't go buy yeah. Zillow. Leads. You couldn't go buy realtor.com leads. Even pay-per-click was out of reach for you financially. So <clears throat> how did you do this with really limited resources? Cause this is super relevant to what's going on in our market right now where agents are kind of tight and pulling back a little bit, you know, on their budgets. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, as things are shifting where, you know, uh, you, you got to do more than buy leads. And obviously if things start drying up, which is, which is possible, or people are just pulling back, you know, the guys that have, you know, the guys that have, have done a good job marketing or branding themselves are going to be the ones that are going to last or be sustainable or be chosen once things start slowing up and where their value is going to be appreciated. But um, so, as I said, you know, I, I think about 12 years into this. So let's just say, Six, nine months into, into real estate, uh, I went to a regional conference and a gentleman that's been in the business, still in the business, he's probably been a realtor about 40 years, single agent. And he consistently does probably 150 deals by himself. And uh, he, we, we'd had like a little mastermind, you know, a panelist, whatever per se, and everybody gave their spiel and he gave a spiel and he held up two pictures. Both of them were very prominent people. One of them was very noticeable being George Washington. Obviously everybody knows who George Washington, everybody sees him every day on a dollar bill. And there's another person that was very prominent too. He was also US president. You probably wouldn't recognize him much in history about. I think it was James Madison or somebody. Point being, he said, you need to be a George Washington. So I'm like, what does that mean? And you hear a lot where, you know, us as realtors, and you see it more if you're an individual agent, you know, hey, I offer a concierge service or, hey, I offer this or this is, you know, what I'm doing. But it doesn't matter if they don't know about you, in my opinion. So I figured out quickly that I needed to become a George Washington. And, you know, like yourself, uh, I'm not as wide as you are, but I'm certainly taller. So we walk into a room and, 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 and we go however, directions. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, you walk into a room and you're noticed and um, you know, was told to me, Hey, Jason, you're, you're a tall, decent looking guy. And you walk into a room, people notice you just got to get into more rooms. And it, I call that like the George Washington effect, I guess, basically. So, um, you could be the best realtor on the planet, but if nobody knows who you are, if you're not putting yourself out there, then it's not relevant. So, so I quickly just did things differently. You know, I was one of the first agents to put my face on assignment here in our local market, which is really odd, but um, I wasn't afraid to put myself out there and I, I presented myself daily consistently. I wore, I literally wore the exact color. I had like five of the same shirt, pants, name tag. And I just wore it every day and I just, just got out there basically. Did that look you know, because of Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I would be identified looking in different places and, you know, I'd, <laughs> he's yeah, the guy I'd, with the jeans and the blue sport yeah, coat on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, you know, and, and it's, it's the consistency of that. And we often talk about, you know, the consistency, you know, obviously we're all, some of us are, you know, coaching or in, in health and fitness. And, you know, you talk about the compound effect of just, just showing up, you know, maybe one day you don't push as hard as the other, but the fact that you're consistently putting the work in, it, it, it all applies to all this too. So, um, but there's just other things, you know, like we do open houses, I put umpteen million signs with faces and things like that. And, um, you know, you just, it's like, like I said, I call it the George Washington effect. So that was something that I learned, you know, very so early on in businesses. You're 10 xing your process for your presence is what you're doing, right? Yeah. Like yeah, exactly. nothing, is, nothing is done small. Everything is done to a massive level of action. So instead of putting out one open house sign with no face, you're putting out 20 open house signs with your face all over them um, and, and kind of applying that same basic methodology to every part of your business. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. And then, and then the next piece, you know, so, you know, at that time, I didn't know any better. Of course, it was just more of a 10 X of just myself, my image, my, 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 and, and my brand, I guess. And, and, and you are your own brand. So if you're a funny guy or you're, you know, notorious for getting things done or executing things or whatever it is, you got to figure out what that is for you and 
expose that, get that out there. You know, you and I have different personalities. So how I may market myself or brand myself are going to be far different than the next guy. And you just got to figure out what works for you and do it. Um, how do people figure that out? Like, like if I'm struggling to figure out what my identity is that I want people to think of me as, how do you, how do you diagnose that and figure it out and then market it? Um, you know, I, I think there's got to be a, a real, a realism about you, I think. And I think you got to be careful, you know, um, people want to know that you have a pulse, you know, right? So, I mean, you know, social media. So part of the mindshare piece, it's not just showing houses and, and, and hey, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be salesy in front of a camera or whatever. It's also, you know, exposing your family and who you are and telling stories and bringing value and, and you know, having some transparency in your life because people want to work with people that they like or can relate to or can connect with. You know, if you're funny, be funny. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we're in the Hatch community. Eric's a funny guy and he, you know, and, <laughs> you know, he's a bacon lover and whatever. So, I mean, he, 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 he uses that to his, you know, in his favor. So whatever it may be for you, you know, you're obviously a fitness guy. So, I mean, there's an angle to that in which you, you do preach, you know, the holistic growth of fitness and health. And, you know, so that's my opinion, your angle. Um, you know, everybody's got a little bit different approach. You know, you're much more of a dad oriented person than I am. I'm more, you know, wanting to be, you know, just, uh, a showman, I guess, per se, or can be a, more of a social be. person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. There you go. Yes. So, um, you know, so whatever it may be for you, you just got to figure out and do it. So, you know, a lot of it's just trial by error, put yourself out there, but you know, you got to just start. And a lot of people, um, either they, they, you know, want to put 10 product out there, but there's a saying, you know, 10 sixes are better than one ten. You just got to start somewhere and just start doing it, but it's got to be consistent. And, and then, not only the consistency, but, you know, what's your call to action too? There's a lot of, I see a lot of signs, you know, call me and you can buy and sell with us. It's like, okay, well, that, well, that doesn't make me want to pick the phone up. Um, you know, there's certainly a bunch of unique value propositions out there that you can offer. You know, here I'm in the water from the arc, actually, uh, he used to be one of my agents and he's, he's actually the number one team here locally now. And he offers, Hey, you know, list of us, we'll stage your home for free. That's his call to action. Sure. Um, you know, a different approach, whatever it may be, obviously, you know, you've seen the guaranteed sale programs or instant offers, or, Hey, we'll give you money for repairs or whatever it may be, but there's gotta be something, um, typically, and you gotta be consistent with it. So, um, but yeah. So authenticity is what I'm hearing you saying, like that, that's super important. If you're trying to clarify your identity on what to put out there, go for authentic. Like if it's your family, if it's your fitness, if it's your work, try to mix these things together. Um, one of the big mistakes I see agents make is they just talk about work on their social media page. And I really think one out of five social media posts at the most should be work-related. The rest should be your life. You know what I mean? And uh, Jason, have you experienced or had conversations with agents that don't want to put up personal photos? Like they don't want their kids on social media. Okay. Um, okay. how, how do you handle that? Because like you've seen Rachel and I, like we don't hold back. Like our whole life is on social media and it's unapologetically so. Like we want to capture um, the memories of our kids and social media for us is one of those ways to do that. Like I love, I pull out my Facebook memories every day and I look through them. It's like the yeah. real things I did 10 years ago or three years ago. Yeah. And it, it brings such joy to me to do that. And that's the number one reason we do it. It's not for other people, it's for sure. our own memories. But what right. do you tell people that have that kind of limiting belief on not sharing their personal details, you know? I mean, you got to get over it. I mean, especially this day and age. I mean, it's a very social world. I mean, uh, and, and the other funny, you know, the interesting thing, when I first started Facebook, really, at least in our marketplace, started really becoming a thing for business. So like, I, I happened to kind of be a young enough guy to, to phase into that. Now it's, I'm the old guy and everybody's doing TikToks, whatever, you know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, but then I was the young guy. So like, I, I, I leveraged that. And I mean, it, it, it's that straightforward, like, if you're in real estate, you better be social. Or you're just you're 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 not going to exist. I, in my opinion, um, there was a statement made by uh, uh, I forget his name, but he said, "If your business is boring, you'll go out of business." And you know, people are scrolling social media, and you got you know you're you're showing an MLS listing, or you're doing a Facebook Live or something or whatever it may be about uh, an open house or something, and then. You know, I'm sharing my little princess daughter on the beach. Who's <laughs> going to get the mind share? My daughter is going to beat you every time. 
So what right. can you do? You're not going to beat it, but what can you do to offset that? And I think that's what people need to start thinking about um, from that perspective is, is what can you do to either bring value, be funny, you know, whatever it may be to just grab attention. And, but you got to be humanized. And if you're not, people will see right through that bullshit. So really fast. <laughs> so before we talk about social channels, because I, I do want to unpack that with you a little bit and get specific for people, um, like break down for us the differences between branding and lead generation, because these are two very different things. And yeah. you can't afford just to do one. You have to do both if you want yeah. to scale your business, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and, and there's a big difference between marketing and branding. And I see a lot of people marketing and trying to you know, get themselves out there, but there's no brand. There's no clear brand. There's no, and I say, but what I mean by brand, there's, there's not a clear value proposition, what they're offering. There's not a clear call to action. There's not a clear, your colors are different every time you post, you know, they're throwing things on Canva and one day it's teal. And, um, you know, the next time it's, um, you know, light blue or whatever, you know, there's no consistency in what they're, you know, what they're putting out there. So that's, that's important. And, um, you know, anybody can buy Zillow leads or buy some PPC leads and let them get, get the phone to ring, but what can you do to get them to call you? And, you know, it's I the, think the biggest outbound kind of thing, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. And, 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 and we've, as we've talked in the past, like really up until the last couple of years of our business here in New York, did I ever buy leads? Um, I didn't, I, I didn't have a CRM for several years coming in. I had a notepad and a pen and just just drive everything down. <laughs> It gives me anxiety to think about it too. I don't even know how I did it, but I did. But I didn't know any better. You know, that's what you did. You just worked, you know? Right. Um, and, um, you know, so um, a lot of it's, the, you know, the, the consistency of putting the, the appropriate stuff out there, you know, you know, like I said, color schemes and, and, and how things look, you know, you, you know, you're, you, you know, you, you are your own brand. So whatever it is that you want to portray, you need to make sure you're doing that consistently and, um you know, if you're trying to represent certain things, you got to make sure you're representing the appropriate stuff with the right, um, you know, there's this, what am I trying to say? Like, there's a lot of websites out there. There's a lot of stuff out there that just looks like, you know, a 12 year old put it out there really, you know, and, and, and one day it's good, one day it's not. And you got to just be consistent with all that stuff. So, I mean, that's about, the biggest thing. Huh? What about brand voice? Like brand voice is something I see some inconsistencies on with agents. Can you talk about that a little bit? Which piece? Brand voice? Brand voice. Like, like what is the what is the voice of this brand? Does it sound the same? Is the messaging the same? Is the yes, word choice right. the same? You know what I mean? Like, it, is there consistency in how the messaging is being delivered? Is there consistency in the call to actions, the value propositions, like you're saying? Brand voice to me is super important. I see a lot of agents that don't think they have the time to do social media. And they go hire a company for like a thousand dollars a month to do posts for them, and they wonder why it falls flat. And it falls flat because there's no authenticity to it, and because it's not in your voice. Yeah, I write exactly. all of my own social media content. I will spend typically around two hours a week, and I will write out all my posts for the week. I'll write all my emails for the week, and then I will copy paste them in when I'm ready to actually share them on social media channels. So, does does that make sense? As I kind of frame brand voice for you, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a, and that's kind of what I'm trying to say is there, there, everything has to be cohesive. Everything has to be, there has to be cohesion with it. It has to be consistent. It has, everything just has to be the same all the time. And, 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 and so again, back to the marketing, branding is, you know, like you think of Geico, the Gecko or whatever, there's lots of different brands that you think of. And it's just nonstop. It's over rinse, wash, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat. And it gets stuck in your brain. So they've created mindset. That's branding. That's creating a brand. Marketing is... We're going to talk about a gecko today and then a guana tomorrow type of thing. And, and, and that's what a lot of people are doing. There's just no consistency and cohesion to what they're putting out for value, what they're putting out for the color schemes, the, the, the call to action, the vibe preposition. And it, it's a long-term play. Branding is a long-term play, just like, you know, cultivating or, or you know, prospecting for leads. It's, it's not a, a tomorrow thing. You're not going to market for five days and expect the result. It's a long-term play. And that was something that we always have done here and in lieu of buying leads um so um that's that's my take on the brand voice i guess to answer your question and then on social media channels i mean for most people it's really overwhelming there's so many channels there's tiktok facebook instagram pinterest youtube like 
it's it's overwhelming to try to have a presence on all of them. How do you handle that? Um, I, I mean, we do it. So we, I think a lot of people will feed it from one one platform to the next. That's how we handle it. Uh, I mean, I think guys, and and we could approve on this ourselves um, here in Florida for sure. But I think people are posting anywhere from like seventy to eighty times a day. So like. If you think about that, you have TikTok, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have YouTube, whatever. So there's four to five different platforms. So, I mean, you need to be posting basically three to four times a day on different things, whether it be, you know, something of your family, something of a value proposition or value add, excuse me. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's just the consistency of that. So, um, and, and I think, again, it's just being authentic to what it is. You know, we, we made quite the name for ourselves and a lot of these things aren't, you know, the issue with branding and the issue with some of the stuff, you know, whether it be radio or billboards or things like that, the issue, and, and I know it's, I know you struggle with stuff because you're a data guy, like, how do you track it? Right. And the answer right. is you can't, it's, does the phone ring or not? And you can ask people whether people are calling or not, but like we used to create all kinds of funny memes all the time. And I can't say that the phone rang because of our memes, but we'd be in public, whatever. Like, hey, you're the guy that makes the memes or hey, you know, we love your memes or whatever. That's a form of mind share. So there's some of these things that you just can't, you know, you know, you just can't track, but it's all the big picture. So as you were saying earlier, you know, you still got to buy leads. You still got to do, you got a little, do a little bit of everything. And, um, you know, and it all, you know, packages in together to create the brand. Um, Billboard and, for commu- Billboard and radio are super effective branding tools, in my opinion. They're, they're less effective on direct lead generation, but they're super effective when it comes to building a really big brand pretty quickly. Um, they're yep. also the most expensive media types you can find. Uh, you know, like when we did radio, I think our radio bill was $12,000 a month. I mean, it was yep. really expensive and it was always hard to track, like you're saying. You know, we'd always ask people, like, how'd you hear about us? But most people would hear the message on radio and they would just Google my name or the Novak team. And then they'd kind of come through that call routing. So you just have to ask great questions to try to track it. And it was, it was difficult to do at best. And billboards, billboards yeah. are that much more uh, hard to do as well. I think that's the expensive way. If you have a lot of financial capacity, it's definitely a good option for you. Um, but I think what we're really talking about today is how to do this at a, a macro level and with limited funds, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, I mean, the next piece is, you know, I said earlier, you know, like, you know, just, just getting in rooms and stuff, you know, obviously social and community events and just, just, you, you just got to be you can expose yourself to as many people as you can. And um, that's, I know that's stuff that you guys do and a lot of our communities are doing, you know, whether it be like our broker and Bruce thing or whether we're doing pie days or whatever, all those sorts of things, those are all part of your brand too. And, you know, what, you know, the mind share that's treated as a result of those events. Um, you know, we did a, a great event last fall for teacher appreciation. Um, it was totally random. It, we, wanted to, we wanted to kind of make a splash in our marketplace. And, um, you know, we held an event and it was called uh, professional drink development. Basically, it's, it's a phrase for teachers to do personal development, or professional development, whatever. So we call it the professional drink development. And basically, it was a night on us for, for teachers. And at that time, you know, they were going through a lot of stuff with politics and all the stuff with COVID as a result. And, you know, it was kind of a night on us. And, and it was a great event. So, I mean, that's all part of it, too. And and again, consistency, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be doing these things consistently. So um, it's all, it's all part of it all intertwines and it, there's not just one thing that you can be doing, but whatever it is that you are doing, you need to figure it out and, and, and be consistent with it. So whether you're a funny guy or, you're, you know, uh, if you're, if you're a fitness health guru, whatever it may be, whatever your, whatever's in your DNA, whatever resonates in your passion about, you need to figure it out and just do it and be right. consistent with it. For me, I try to pick just two channels to focus my energy on. Like, I I can't do all of them. It's just overwhelming to me. So I focus on Facebook and I focus on Instagram. And those are like the two that I really try to share content on. I have somebody that does like, he shares my videos on YouTube for me, but I don't personally do it. Um, Will you break down the different kind of media types with Instagram? Because I know it's confusing to people. And I think that there's really a blueprint that you want to follow for Facebook stories, Instagram stories, Instagram reels. Instagram posts and Facebook posts. And I want to get your take on that, Jason, before I share my thoughts. So as far as the difference between stories and reels and, and just yeah, well, as, what, what's the kind of, what's the best kind of content for each one of those placements? 
Um, I think if you're giving some sort of a, a, a value add, if you're one to, you know, like like you and I share things in terms of, you know, the fitness journey or, or you know, lately for me, I, I've been on a mindset journey as far as, you know, sharing vulnerabilities and things like that. I believe Facebook is a much better platform for that stuff. Kind of um, storytelling, like a, like a long storytelling. Yeah, yeah. yeah a longer storytelling for sure. Um and then as far as, you know, like a lot of family stuff and pictures of my kids and things of that nature, oftentimes those are put on Instagram story and then they were to, would have be betrayed on, on Facebook story as well. And that kind of just keeps a chronological order of whatever we're doing and all that. And I try to kind of leave some of that stuff off, depending on what it is from actually posting on our, on our page or timeline. Um, and, uh, you know, Facebook obviously is a much better platform for sharing links and things like that. Instagram's a little bit more challenged, you know, that stuff. But um, nonetheless, the, the, the larger storytelling, I think Facebook is a much better platform. Um, of course, just like TikTok um, or Instagram Reels is kind of the one and the same, you yep. know, having, you know, 30 second blasts of a story, or whatever. Um, and they seem to get pretty good, good engagement. Um, and we do a lot of collaboration with, you know, I'll, whether I'll do it with just like my personal Instagram or our, our business page doing collaborations you're exposing it to a much larger network um which is by the way some things that you and i could be doing or our sandbox could be doing doing some collaborations um to just gain some exposure too so that's actually a unique tool if you're not aware of that um but yeah i mean uh, i'd be lying to say that i'm not a tiktok guru um <laughs> so like that that is definitely an area that i need to improve on and it's certainly, as I relate to when I first started real estate, you know, I was one of the probably the, the, the few guys that, you know, was 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 good at, on social media or Facebook at the time because that was really all that was. And now you have all these younger guys that are on 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 TikTok doing their thing. Now, my my take on that is is it's all well and good and it's creating mindset, but there's still no value add. There's still no call to action. So like that's all buzz, but there's. But it's like, what are you selling? What are you trying to accomplish, right? So I still think from a branding perspective, there always has to be some sort of a call to action. Um, and you got to just be mindful of that and be consistent with it, I think. So, um, but it all has its different different pieces. So as I said, like whether we're creating memes or whatever it is. So, I mean, that's a different thing than, than a call to action thing. So like you're, you have storytelling, you have whether, like, like you say, whether you're sharing memes I used to share, and I, you know, I think like Eric, a lot of us share, you know, dad memes and jokes and stuff. That's all actually part of it. It has nothing to do with real estate, but it humanizes us as people. Yep. Um, so, you know, you just got to have a mixed bag of that stuff, I believe. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So I, I like Facebook for storytelling for sure and making like a very clear point. When I have something that's weighing deep on my mind or heart, that's usually where I will go with it. And I'll put a lot of thought into how to tell that story. Oftentimes starting with like the crescendo, like the high point of the story, and then kind of unpacking the backstory behind it to make the point. I love Instagram and Facebook stories for just kind of capturing parts of your day. And I think if you're, as an agent, if you're consciously aware that you should try to capture more of what you're doing just automatically, that's an easy way to get two or three posts a day. Like get a picture of you making some calls, get a picture of that meeting with the title rep that you're doing, um, get a picture, you know, of your kids eating dinner with you. Like just these like daily things you're doing. And then I really like Instagram reels. To me, it's like the new Facebook live. Uh, for how much organic reach it can get. And so you're limited to 90 seconds, I think it is on Instagram Reels. Um, but the the reach on it is insane. Like I, I threw up this just stupid video of me bench pressing some dumbbells yesterday and it got viewed 5,800 times in like an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so no, I, I yeah, feel like sure. Instagram Reels is what Facebook Live used to be. And so I'd encourage everyone to get into Instagram Reels, play around with it a little bit. It's pretty hard to break. Um, put captions on it because a lot of people watch, they don't listen um, and, and see what your reach, you know, comes out of that. So I, I just, I think Instagram Reels used a lot more as agents um, for sure. So, okay, uh, Jason, one of the things we haven't talked about is, and I know this is important to you, is how important is the experience that you create for your clients when it comes to increasing mindshare? I mean, it's everything. So, um, I know one of the things that we talked about is is it's it's easy for us as, as top performers to be very transactional. You know, you uh, can you know when you're you're doing a lot of volume in, in units, um, it, it, it's easy to make somebody feel that way. So I mean, everything. You know, there's a lot of things that we miss post closing. So 
Um, I know you guys use a, a, a service called Client Giant, which obviously, you know, you're, you're sending gifts and you can, you can tell me some of that stuff, but, but what could you do to make that a little more custom and obviously to create some really massive cheerleaders for your business? So, um, you know, that's a mind share piece, but it, that's obviously a piece to generate, you know, referral business, which as we know is really the best, right? So, um, so I think it's thinking about what can you do to make an impact, um, you know, a lot of people may buy the, you know, the wine, you know, the package of wine or cheese plates or whatever it is that they're buying. It's all, you know, basic stuff. It's almost like expected in a sense. So like, but what can you do, you know, to say you're a client of mine and obviously you're a fitness guru and I don't know, I, you know, I don't even know, like I Send me a got steak. you like a, <laughs> yeah, like a steak or like a dumbbell something. I don't know what, whatever, just something. Right. And like, Something or, personalized, you know, right? sub, yeah, yeah, something personalized, a subscription for some supplement thing, I, whatever, whatever it may be, but personalized to you. And, you know, I mean, you would never forget that. Like, oh man, like he really took the time to, to learn about me or really, you know, do something that, you know, you can appreciate. So, you know, maybe you're a, you know, a Seahawks fan or whatever type of thing, and you got a signed jersey or something. I mean, there, there's, I mean, that's probably a little out there, but you know, something like that, just something very personal and something that's going to be a make, make a large impact. And, and, and by turn, you know, you develop cheerleaders as a result. And, um, you know, and I see it firsthand uh, from, from, from doing that here for sure. Yeah. I think there's a couple components to this. The first one is to put thought into what you're doing for your clients, like, like create different milestone wins for them where you're celebrating along the way with them. That, that of course is super important. Like Jason said, our team uses client giant for scaling this um, client giants does gifting. Once they go under contract, it's those transactional packages. And they also do quarterly gifting for all of our past clients. It, it allows you to scale it pretty quick. Like we have, um, I don't know, 1200 past clients. So it's hard to um, do it with that volume of people uh, in house. And so Client Giant kind of operates as an extension of us and it comes from us, but via Client Giant. Uh, if you can do a customized path like Jason is talking about, that's even better. Um, that's unique to the person. I love that. And I think it's going to really create a raving fan where the person is sharing on their social media and things like that. But the other thing that we're not talking about that is super important is massively exceeding their expectations, representing them as a buyer or seller. Like your anticipation of their need and the expectations you set and the way that you prepare them and then under promise but over deliver is what will result in people talking about you. And that's yeah. gonna make people come back to you and wanna send friends and family your way as well. Do you wanna talk about that, Jason? Yeah, I mean, and, and we actually talked about that when I was visiting you guys out in Washington, you know, like it, it could be simple things like you pull into the driveway and that you have a reserved spot for them. You know, hey, John Smith, you know, welcome to the Novak team. And they're pulling in and, and, and there's something on display or whether they walk in and maybe you have a little screen or whatever, you know, welcome, whatever it may be. So, I mean, it starts there. And then obviously, you know, for you guys and, and a lot of us as teams, you know, as far as the, the process, you know, the buyer consultation that you guys do and, and really sitting down and really peeling the layers back and understanding, you're not just being an order taker. There's plenty of that going on. And you're in your, and then obviously you, you have a showing partner model to where, you know, you're, you're, you're peeling layers back and figuring out, what you can add for value and, and, and then you have somebody, you know, open the doors for them and, 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 and have them every step of the way, go on the inspections and go into all those things that are very important that sometimes as buyers agents, we struggle to attend. Yeah. I call um, that like, <clears throat> service. Like a lot of, like I've done webinars yeah. on the selling partner model and a yeah. lot of agents have this limiting belief that if it's not them opening the door, that the client's going to feel disconnected from them. And if you empower right. your showing partner, you don't call them your employee. You don't call them your assistant. It's your partner. Then it really comes off as a white glove service where this person has yep. access to see home seven days a week because there's two of you, not one of you. And they can see them from eight o'clock in the morning until seven or eight o'clock at night, depending on the time of the year. Um, and that's a huge value add to give to people. They, what they want to do is they want to see homes of their buyers on their time. Like they want to see it as quick as possible, uh, but they don't care if you're the one that shows them the home if you set the expectations up front. They, they view it as a value. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then obviously all the communications after you go under contract, like, uh, you know, most of our five-star reviews reference our transaction coordinator, like almost every time, Hey, we, you know, her name's Jess and, and she's absolutely phenomenal over, over communicates, like you say, and, and over delivers. And oftentimes her name is mentioned on every five-star review. So, I mean, you know, so, you know, obviously we're able to leverage that and create value and, 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 and create, um, 
you know, a, a memorable experience, you know, through the process. And then, and then, but you got to be thinking about what happens after the process is over with. And obviously that's where the client giant piece comes in or a customized saying or something that's personalized to them. And uh, just, just the whole experience in general. And, and I believe that is how you, you know, create massive, massive cheerleaders. And that, I think that's everything. And we talked about some of that stuff. And in fact, I can share with you some of the ideas that I had here on this, on, on, on this. Yeah, get um, super tactical because you had some pretty cool yeah. stuff. I, I would love to yeah. implement it. This takes thought on how to actually execute it. Yeah. So one of the things that we thought about doing, and, and if you think about it, I mean, and I think we broke it down to what your cost was per client. Really, and it was it was about three four hundred bucks or something. I think over over a period of time. So it's like, and a lot of the stuff you can create relationships with different vendors and and kind of have it almost. You know, you're not paying for it until the service of the vet or or you know the, the service is performed. So. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is, is and, and all can be done in your CRM and scheduled and obviously your transaction creator or, or whomever you have, you know, to, to facilitate some of this stuff. But, um, you know, basically, you know, you would still have a closing gift if whatever it would be, it'd be personalized. But then like 30 days after one big thing in Florida, when somebody's moving, how about you have their house clean? So professionally clean their house. So, I mean, I think we all, uh, you know, anytime you're, you're moving, you, you mess the house up. So what, what would it be to, you know, send somebody else to do that. So another thing in Florida that's an issue is with the rain and the massive amounts of heat is houses need to be pressure washed, driveways need to be pressure washed. So X amount of time, we were going to send somebody out to do that um, just to freshen things up. Um, and then I think, you know, then there would be calls and certain conversations that we'd be, we'd be facilitating obviously over the course of the year, but it'd be basically like a 12 month program. And then at the end of 12 months, you know, like an anniversary thing and you bought them like a bottle of Dom or something, you know, I mean, it's $150, $180 and you had it personally delivered with, you know, names on champagne glasses, you know, engraved and, and, you, and somebody shows up and knocks on the door and offers them a bottle of Dom for the anniversary. So, yeah. you know, if you added it all up, I mean, it might be four or 500 bucks, but think of the impact that it would have. Right. What's um, your average commission that. check down there, Jason? Uh, About 15 grand. Yeah. And people are, are all bent out of shape spending 400 bucks to wow their clients right. yeah. <laughs> it makes yeah. no sense so no so i mean you know i mean if you had to buy those individually but i mean you could make really so like you know and not everybody's gonna you know uh take advantage of all those things and so you would you know whether you send them like a voucher for you know hey I, here's a voucher on me to get your house clean that way they can schedule it and, and it takes you out of the equation they, they they're able to do that with a vendor same thing with a pressure wash. And, and the idea is obviously to, to kind of make a wholesale price. So when that voucher gets redeemed, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you got some control of your costs. So, and then obviously it gives value uh, to, to the vendor, of course, you know, as well. So gets them in the door and maybe they can get a client out of the deal too. So, you know, so, I mean, those are just a couple of things that, that we are doing. What you're anticipating is need and pain points, right? And then you're coming up with proactive solutions to them before the person's going to experience it. Before they know that they need it, you've already got a solution on how to deliver it to them. And that that's what's super important. So I think one of the big things to take away from today's webinar is go look at your process. Like what does your process look like from when you set the appointment to when you sign the person, to when you're showing them houses, to when they go under contract, to when they close, and then the next year after they close. And I guarantee you, you can probably find three, four, five, ten 10 things in there that you could improve, whether if that's just communication from your team, if it's wow touches along the way, if it's, if it's client gifting, whatever it is, anticipation of need, there's ways that you can dramatically improve your experience for your clients if you just sit back and really take a look at it. It's not enough to just be transactional, guys. That makes you just one of a million other agents. You have to differentiate okay. yourself. And that starts by creating a very unique experience that anticipates need and wants and desires and problems before they're going to happen for the person. So yeah, for sure. Yep. The other thing we didn't talk about yet, Jason, is client events. Like client events to me are huge for creating mind share. Do you want to talk about client events a little bit? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we do, you know, several client events that we we've done out through the year. Um, I, and I talked about one. Um, this was more of a serious influence thing. Uh, with the with the teacher appreciation event, but uh, but same idea. One of the big ones that we all do is as a pie day. So you know our clients, we have some fun with we whether it's a Costco or a Sam's Club or whatever BJ's, whatever store you guys have in your marketplace. You know you're you're buying pies and branding them appropriately, and they're getting to the pick and choose whether it's a pumpkin apple, whatever it may be, and and you're creating an event. So like it, what you're doing is is 
for one, you're, it's a $10 pie. I mean, it, it would be cheaper for them to go get their own, but the fact that you're, you know, facilitating something and whether you're bringing them to them to live in or you're bringing them to you. So it's a way to bring your clients to you and to be able to engage and to, um, you know, add some mind share again uh, by doing that and, and proximity to your past clients. So uh, that's, a, that's an event we do. Um, we, we haven't done the date night. I know some other people have done this where around Valentine's day, um, you know, whether you buy a frozen pizza, I know all these has heart shaped pizzas. Uh, if you have an all these in your marketplace and, and, and like a beverage of choice, whether it be, you know, wine or beer or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, and, and same thing, you know, Hey, pizza and, you know, a drink on me and, um, you know, maybe do a hashtag, whatever that way they're sharing it on social media and whether they're watching Netflix or, or whatever it may be. And it just, again, just creates mind share. I mean, it's very simple. And typically, oh, go ahead. Yeah, typically how we do it is we have one of our lenders uh, or title companies or whatever kind of help, you know, foot the bill or, or share in the cost of it. And you're able to do a lot of these things without really costing really any money or minimal money anyway. So there's a way to do that for sure. So we do three events a year and I'll break down each of these events for you. The first event is the date night event where they come grab a pizza. We don't do the heart-shaped ones because I think they look ridiculous, but we do a pizza yeah, and yeah. a beverage of choice. That's more of an informal one where they just pop by, they grab it, you say hi, um, and they're out of there. The big one that we do every year, this is going to be the second year done now in August, is we rent out the entire minor league baseball stadium and we do a movie in the park at night and we do full catering, full bar, everything. And we don't limit this event to just our past clients. We invite our sphere as well. So it's about $25 per person. So it's not cheap. This is like a $22,000 event to host. But again, the lender pays for half of it. And last year we had like 470 people out at this event. That will get people talking about you. And the really cool thing about that event is if you open it up to people beyond just your past clients, the buzz will just be that much bigger and better. The last one we yep. do is in December, first week in December, typically we do kind of like a breakfast thing um, and also a bar and then photos with Santa where people can come in get those photos with their pet or with their kids and they can have a drink like a mimosa, they can have some pancakes, whatever else, and they get to hang out for about an hour. People love that event for some reason. I don't know why, but they just absolutely love it. So the whole, the whole key to this is that you're giving something without expecting anything. I'm not calling Jason saying, hey, Jason, who do you know that's thinking about buying or selling real estate? I'm calling Jason saying, Jason, hey, I want you to bring the kids and come to the movie in the park and drink beer and have cheeseburgers on me so we can get to see you again and just hang out. Like that that's what you want to do. You want to just give them something. And inevitably, real estate is going to come up in the conversation at some point. So yep. is there yep. anything else you want to add, Jason? We're kind of running out of time here, but I just want to give you a chance to kind of wrap things up and maybe share just like the top two, you know, action items for people to go take right now. Yeah. I mean, um, action items. So figure out what it is that you enjoy doing. If you're a funny person or whatever, start putting social media content out there as it re relates to real estate. So like, you know, real estate's a product. So like, you're not selling a product, you know, you're not selling a, a, a pair of glasses and in, 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 in the, in the, in the, you know what I mean? And it's a unique thing, they look cool, whatever. The houses are the product. So like in our business, we are the product actually in a sense, right? So how can you differentiate yourself for the next guy? And as you had said, you know, as we talked about, uh, you know, different uh, post-closing things and like that, those are all differentiators. So, but you got to start somewhere and you got to start and you got to, and, and you are your own brand and you just need to figure out what that is for you and be consistent with it. So um, as I said early on for myself, like I just wore the same thing every day. I had, I had, a, I had a black shirt that said accident. Yeah. And, and I had a pair of gray khakis or with slacks, whatever you want to call it you know, slip on shoes. And that's what I wore every day. Had more hair then. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, literally, that's what I wore every single day. And and all my signs looked the same. So I mean, and there was just, like you say, the 10x rule and just, you know, really put myself out there in that regard. So in the social media contact with the same. So like, you just, you have to start with massive action. And none of that really costs any money. You got to wear clothes every day. You got to, you're going to have to have signs. If you're doing open houses, do them big, like do things big. People will notice, almost be obnoxious in a sense. Um, and those are some of the things that I did. And it's just memorable things. Um, the, the other thing that I recognize that I built my business on is I would do things that nobody would do. I mean, I would mow people's lawns. I would vacuum. 
like whatever I needed to do to sell a house to just get in the door to be to create you know anything at all for business basically and eventually that just you know spiraled um and, and got the big wheel spinning um so you know if you're a new agent or if you're have relative low experience or, or not as much experience i mean those are all things that you should be doing just do whatever the next guy's not going to do because i can tell you right now with the way things have been there's people not doing a ton because they haven't had to and as things shift if you're the guy that's doing the work or putting themselves out there you're going to be the one that's still going to be in business in another two years and then everybody else is not i hate to say it but um you know you just you just got to put the work in the last action item i'm going to ask people is to go and figure out what their customer journey is and identify ways to make it better. Yes. So, yep. all right. Well, Definitely. Jason, thanks so much for your time today, brother. Always love yeah, man. Being with you and, uh, yeah. brought a lot of value. So thank you so much for your time to do that. Uh, if people have questions about this, uh, feel free to hit us up on Marco Polo. Um, you can find us on Facebook Messenger. There's all sorts of ways to connect with each of us. Okay, catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.